The world ended. Didn't you get the memo? What do you suggest? You're listening to Dead Air on 89.5 The Wave, KCFB Ferguson. Think about something else. <sighs> puppies and kittens. <sighs> Dead puppies and kittens. <sighs> That is right, you are listening to the one, the only, Dead Air here on 89.5 The Wave. I'm your host, your friendly neighborhood DJ, Jazz Hands, back to talk about last Sunday's very epic The Walking Dead titled Service. And my God, what an episode it was. You fully get to see the extent of Negan's, Rick is just under Negan's boot under Negan's boot. But like I said, I'm your friendly neighborhood DJ Jazz Hans, and I'm actually joined with somebody new to the program, Dalton. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Oh, dude, no problem, no problem. I always, like I said, this show is for fans of the series that need a little bit more time to talk that Yeah, stuff happened, and they need a little bit more time to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think the great thing that we learned with this episode is that Negan doesn't care about political correctness at all. No. And you can say a lot more on cable than you really can on regular TV. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, because what a line that was. And, of course, we can't say it because yeah. we get in trouble. We're just students. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if I can morally say that to another man. So, yeah, we'll probably just shy away from that for yeah, now. Yeah, let's just say it was uh, it was messed up and uh, – uh, Rick might need a lodgings, lodging afterwards. <laughs> yeah, he might need some, like, tea and honey. I mean, yeah. you really want to loosen that throat back up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, Dalton, what do you think of the episode? I think it really just depends on what you want from The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want an action pack, like, zombies are everywhere, they're just coming at you, it's not that episode for you. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's great because it's a psychological you know, warfare that Negan's inflicting on the group. And most importantly, Rick, he's trying to break him down. You get to see that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll agree with you on, on that. It was one of those episodes that there wasn't a lot of action, which I actually, because I griped about it the last episode with uh, Dwight, I actually prefer episodes like this where they don't have to do a walker scare. What do you think of uh, just this bombshell of, oh yeah, I know, I know Judith isn't mine. Yeah, I mean, well, everybody you know It's kind of like that secret around town everybody knows, but nobody wants to admit to. But uh -huh. when he comes out and he's, like, basically telling everybody, I'm not stupid. I know this isn't my child. Mm -hmm. And, oh, man, why are you, like, you so invested in it? And it's just crazy that, you know, I think he feels guilty about Shane's death. And that's why he's really trying to... Uh, be the father for this child even though technically he's not but he's yeah. assumed it because he loved his wife Lori uh, Shane was his best friend unfortunately you know Shane loved Lori too and it caused you know his death and I love Lori a lot exactly <laughs> but it's just it's just an interesting situation it adds more to that psychological um, you know feel that we have for this season is What's going on in Rick's mind right now mm -hmm. with all this Negan stuff? And on top of that, now he's dealing with the stress of, I have a baby that I'm raising that isn't mine, and mm -hmm. I know it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to figure out this new world and this new situation we're in. And I think that's more of the fun is watching him kind of think things out, figure things out. <laughs> but it is interesting to see this new trust that Rick has in Michonne and their relationship develop because... I remember when she first entered in. I mean, there was a lot of suspicion. And she was alone for so long, so she didn't open up. But yeah. it's nice to see her opening up with Rick and their relationship kind of developing. But now we got some turmoil because Michonne's wanting to really practice in, uh, with that gun. Like, the, yeah. the sniping thing was a little odd. I mean, when you're that good with a sword, you think you probably don't want to use guns at all. But yeah. I guess it's her Achilles heel, so she's trying to cover that up. They they do have this really good relationship, and and it is one that's really based in trust. What do you think about Negan bringing Daryl along it with was, the crew? It was a really good play because he was psychologically torturing not only Daryl, but also Rick. He's dangling Daryl in front of him. He's offering, do you want Daryl to stay? You want me to, to leave him with you? Mm -hmm. And you know he's not. There's no chance at all that he's going to let Daryl come back to that camp because he wants Daryl to work for him. You can see that in the way he's trying to break him down and the way he hasn't, you know, put him on the wall yet. It was really interesting to watch that from both sides of the dynamic of it where he's essentially teasing Rick and Daryl at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
but you know that no matter what, Daryl's still going back into that room to listen to that god awful yeah. music. Easy Street. Yeah. I love I love that song. I want to get that for my cell phone. Um, but I, I like that you kind of brought that up because my my whole thought of uh of why he didn't say yes, I want to stay or try to plead his case too was because I I don't think uh at this point in time Daryl can really look at the crew. He caused inadvertently caused Glenn's death. And now he also thinks he causes Maggie's. Yeah. I mean, he he's haunted by it, as you can tell, because mm-hmm. at the end of that uh, episode prior, Dwight throws that picture of Glenn's, you know, beaten head yeah. at him. And he said, it's all your fault. And that's why, you know, you can see that, you know, with Daryl's character is that he's blaming himself. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, he tries to escape, but he doesn't really try that hard. Mm-hmm. He wants to be punished because he really feels like he deserves to be there being tortured being given that dog food sandwich every day yeah that you know he caused glenn's death and that's beating him up so until he accepts that we don't really know what we can expect from from daryl um he's just got to move past it so he can realize that you know the group needs him for safety and that's the only way they're really going to get out of this situation uh i think he kind of he doesn't care about his own life right now oh not at all he he's very much if Negan kills me, he kills me. If I somehow live, I live. But either way, I don't care. I mean, you see it both when Negan goes to swing the bat at him last episode. I believe it was called The Cell uh, was the previous episode. And in, in this episode, when you see him point the gun at uh, Daryl and Daryl just kind of keeps walking. Real quick, too, I noticed my friend actually pointed this out. So full credit to her, Kitty. Thank you. Um, but she pointed out that when Michonne was first walking... Um, in the house to get the gun. They had a, uh, what's it called? A Morris Code, I believe. They okay. had a Morris Code poster up on the wall. And later in the episode, you see uh, you see Daryl kind of blinking in a weird way. Do you think that there's a possibility of a subtext of Rick, kind, Rick and Daryl talking to each other and planning something? Wow, I mean, I didn't notice that at all, but kudos to your friend for kind of pulling that through. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's always a chance because these these guys uh, spend a lot of time together, and Rick and Daryl kind of have this, you know, weird connection where it wouldn't shock me if both of them had, like, learned Morse code at some point in their lives and that they were trying to communicate through blinking just so they wouldn't, you know, cause any... Uh, you know, anybody to catch on from the saviors, mm-hmm. but we'll just have to see what, what kind of happens in the next episode, see if that really uh, takes fruit to issue. What, what were your thoughts on Dwight? Because Dwight, Dwight in this episode was, I, there wasn't like a lot of him, but he, when he was, he was kind of rough on Rosita. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what's really going on with him. Uh, I think there's a lot of dynamics I don't even know if Dwight really wants to be where he's at. Mm-hmm. I don't know. if He might be in the same situation where he kind of feels the same about his life because, you know, he took off with his wife and her sister. Mm-hmm. They went into the woods. Saviors, of course, followed after them. Her sister died. Now his wife is married to Negan. Mm-hmm. He's got half a face, and he's, like, essentially just the dog of Negan. Yeah, and, I mean, that's where I say that Dwight is such an interesting and fun character to watch because – you don't know where he's coming from a lot of the times you you could take it you could take it two ways and last episode i said this you could take it two ways when he gave daryl the picture and he was like you need to deal with it you could take it as he's being harsh and a jerk and torturing him or he's given him a reason to fight and not break um and you see him constantly like egging on rosita and then there there was one line he could be messing with them, and that was the line where you see, uh, you see uh, Dwight sit there and say, you know, uh, oh yeah, Rosita, we stole your guns. We walked into your camp and stole your guns, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I mean, it's really what is Dwight's motives at this time, mm-hmm. because he does have that bond with Daryl. They have a past history. And Daryl's thinking to himself, I should have killed you when I had the chance, really letting you go, and your wife was really what caused the downfall of our camp to go to the Saviors and Negan. But at the same time, you know he's he's probably really not proud to be a Savior. He's just mm-hmm. adapted to this world that he's in and the situation that he's in, and he's, you know, he's a fighter. Mm-hmm. He's staying in there because he wants to watch out for his wife, even though she's with Negan. He wants to make sure that she stays alive. So he's doing whatever he has to do for that Mm -hmm. as well. I think he is trying to somehow, you know, 
push Daryl past his guilt, mm-hmm. uh, try to get him into a state where they can team up. I, I can see that. I think Dwight yeah. really sees potential in Daryl, uh, and he's trying to push him through it, as well as Rosita. I think yeah. what he's trying to do is make them more resourceful. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's one thing just to take guns. It's another thing to say, what are you going to do about it now? Um, now, why do you think Carl hasn't really submitted yet? I mean, we could take the easy way out and say boys will be boys, you know? But, <laughs> <laughs> like we do with most issues regarding, uh, you know, adolescent boys in, in society. But I think it really boils down to the example Rick show, uh, you know, has always been in his life. I mean, he's always been, uh, you got you to do the right thing. You got to stand up to the bully. I mean, Rick's a cop. Mm-hmm. And Rick was a good cop, so, you know, his, his morals were pretty spot on with the way that he was raising Carl. And then, you know, they got into this new world where, you know, there's the dead trying to kill him every day. And mm-hmm. Rick was showing him, you know, how to be a strong leader, but also be very assertive and aggressive. Mm-hmm. And now he's he's backing away. He's really, you know, mentally broken. Um, mm-hmm. He doesn't know how he's supposed to be leading anymore. And Carl's still stuck in this, you know, example of his dad and how a real leader is supposed to be. And he wants to step up and be a leader for the group, too. And we've seen that develop you know, further and further. As soon as Carl got a gun, he became, you know, a little badass. Yeah. And he wanted to go out and, you know, guns blazing, help the group, protect the group. And he still wants to. He's trying to follow in Rick's footsteps. But at this point, Rick is trying to play a smarter um, game and strategy and trying to keep the group alive. I mean, what were your thoughts on Father Gabriel? Gabriel, Because he seems like he's the only person as of right now that has hope where everybody else has hope and doesn't have hope. And uh, Gabriel's gotten a lot of slack in the past. You know, uh, I, I know my friend doesn't like him. Uh, Boss Paul, who's off and on, uh, he doesn't, he didn't really <laughs> thought he was just kind of useless. And, and I've never thought that. I love Fire the Gabriel. But what were your thoughts of Gabriel in this ep- episode? I'm just going to say it was one of my favorite sound clips from, except for that very vulgar one that, uh, you know, you yeah. can throw out later. <laughs> but just when he turns around, he's like, whoa. You really creeped up on me. Uh, you got that creepy smile and the the collar yeah. and everything. It's just, you're, you're, you're like he's just going off on him about just how <laughs> yeah. how smiley he is, how weird it is for somebody to be kissed still around in a priest outfit. Yeah. It, it's very unusual. But I think the reason why he's so hopeful is because he's a devout Catholic priest. Like mm-hmm. that's just who he is. He's always you know been a very strong proprietor in his faith. Mm-hmm. But what we've seen is that some of his decisions have changed um, how he views this new world. He doesn't really see it as, you know, um, you know, as much of a sin to be killing, you know, walkers or having to protect yourself. And, you know, if somebody comes at you that's very evil and wants to take everything that you have in that manner, uh, he knows that he's got to protect himself in the group because that's the more righteous thing to do. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, he's definitely a smart, well-calculated man. Um, I mean, that is genius digging a grave for Maggie. Yeah, just, I was not expecting that. I mean, he's he's seen, you know, how they have to continue up this ruse in order to protect everybody uh, that they love. And, I mean, it's just really his character is kind of developing more into the foreground of the, the story. And it'll be interesting to see how, you know, the story moves forward with him as not like a, you know, resistor to killing people that we've kind of seen in the past. Yeah, yeah, I... I, I, I agree with that. And I also think it uh, it has a lot to do with Rick and the crew and why he has so much faith. Because at, what was it, last season, mid-season finale, when the walls fell down and all the walkers came in and Gabriel was praying that, you know, let get, you know, God save us, God save us, God save us. And then he kind of has this, which I kind of agree with 100 percent. i absolutely loved it but when uh when gabriel was like well we need to have faith in ourselves we need to have the strength to fight for ourselves um and rick rick kind of proved that and ever since then you know him and rick have been friends and and i think it is i think it speaks very volumes to his character and and i don't think he's naive for having this hope uh he's he's like you said smart calculating and i think i think he's genuinely he genuinely believes stuff's going to be okay, and and kind of switching switching gears uh, to uh, Spencer. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk about Spencer, man. We got to talk about Spencer. Spencer was interesting in this episode, and so do you think Spencer kind of has a right to be angry with Rick 
the way he is. I mean, he hit the guns, which even Rick said you can't fault him for that. But the wine and the the, the, the storing of the food. And... Yeah, I don't know if you can be mad at a guy that you know kills your father, takes your guns, humiliates you. I don't see how that can play into why you would dislike a person at all. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he's got you know rights to dislike um, Rick, but. He also needs to realize that Rick is trying to take care of everybody in the group. Mm -hmm. And Spencer is that classic pretty boy that really didn't have to work for anything. And you can sell it because his family was really well off. He probably had a very cush existence up until this uh, whole thing started. And then he still had a cush existence. Now he's getting rattled. He's never been, you know, a common person. He's always been held up in high regards probably his whole life. And now he's realizing that he's not. Rick's definitely giving him that reality check. I think I think it is. You know, he's now has this realization that he is not as special, like you said. And and, and honestly, I think there is. He does kind of deserve, or not like deserves it, but it is warranted why Rick, you know, why he is angry at Rick. And I, I kind of hope we get more into the group being angry with Rick. Predictions for next time. Predictions for next time. Yeah, predictions oh, for man. next episode. Um, I think we're going to see a little more of Jesus this time. I think we're going to see how he's uh, reacting to the fact that, you know, he's going to get the word that Alexandria is now, you know, under savior dictatorship. Uh-huh. Um, I think we're going to see how he tries to play into that, um, see him out in the field maybe a little bit more. But I think we are going to see a lot of tensions arise from the people at Hilltop and Maggie because she's the one that worked out this deal that – Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we're gonna kill him. Then you're you're all free. Yeah. You're just gonna give us half. Well, they already took half. Yeah. And now it didn't work out. So when the saviors come to collect, you know, um, that's what I'm gonna see. Feel like we're gonna see in this. We're gonna see a lot of tension arise. I think Maggie might have a close, like, close brush with death, possibly. Mm-hmm. I could I, I could see that. Like I could see that 100. percent I think I think I think exactly. You're right. It's gonna be. A very touch and go episode. I think we're going to be seeing Maggie and and Sasha deal with uh, Hilltop and and Simon. Um, we could very well get an attack mm-hmm. to where they kill that group um, because all it takes and and that's where I think it might come back to bite him in the butt. Why they said, "Oh yeah, Maggie's dead," um, and that could make us that could possibly get us to lose another major character. Um, if Negan, because if, if if Simon goes back, who's played by Steve Ogg, who was Trevor Phillips in GTA, which is <laughs> beautiful. Um, but if he goes back and reports, you know, because uh, there's no getting around it. He's going to go back and report, hey, Maggie, you know, we saw those two chicks that we, you know, killed uh, their buddies for. We saw them up at Hilltop. And he's like, well, why are they at Hilltop? Or even if they attack Spencer and his, or Spencer, Simon. And his crew, and just kill those saviors. Negan should know they're going to Hilltop. Yeah. Why haven't they returned yet? You killed a whole bunch of my men. Now I'm gonna do the exact same, and they would just be in the square one. So there's no getting out of this little net that they've caused unless they completely hide Maggie. Yeah. And I mean, if I wanted to do my Babe Ruth, you know, I'm gonna call it to far left field. I'm gonna try and knock this prediction out. <laughs> uh, Simon gets killed. And in the chaos, Jesus is probably going to rise up as the next uh, next leader for the group. I feel like that would be the most beneficial for him. Mm-hmm. That's just a very, very out there call. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you want to make a bold prediction because if you're right, then you look great. Yeah. If you're it, wrong, then, you're then awesome. everybody's like, well, did, did that really – could that really have happened? He was yeah. just trying to, you know, be funny. <laughs> but I would love to see that. I would love to see Simon. You know, they get – the saviors get really upset with them. They decide that he's no longer needed, and they just execute him on the spot. I think that's it. I think we've covered as much time as possible for Dead Air. Uh, thanks, everybody, so, so much for tuning in. I had a blast, and we will see you next week on Dead Air. Bye, everybody. <laughs>